All right, in this video, we got another offer and compromise accepted. You're gonna go through all the forms that were filed, the 433, the 656, all the documents we sent, all the letters essentially from the IRS during this process, and eventually that acceptance letter. In this particular case, the taxpayer is married. He's not in a community property state, which makes it a little bit easier, but nonetheless does live with his wife. Um, they are married filing separate, so these are separate debts. We do not include her in this offer, but we do include her income to calculate the household expenses. So you'll see that calculation here. We submitted the offer. The IRS essentially did counter offer because his income did go up once an examiner did get assigned, but we got over 300,000, it was like $304,000, uh, his tax debt settled for, it was about $9,700, and you'll see here. All right, so uh, if you're looking to learn about an offer and compromise and wanna see kind of what we did in this particular case, stay tuned. All right, so here's the 433A we filed, okay, does not own a home, he is married, We redacted all the good stuff here, does not have any uh, any dependents, okay, right, but he does have the what we call non-liable spouse because we did married filing separate, so she does, the debt is not on her account, okay, but he is married, all right, he is employed, all right, so we had to include his income here, uh, well, the name of his employer here is really what it comes down to, the information. Pretty straightforward there. He had a bank account, uh, but you'll see it comes down to zero. Um, we did an attachment for this one. Uh, you'll see down here, the attachment, right? That was what was in his account, essentially nothing. There is <clears throat> this IRM. You can get up to the amount of your living expenses removed from your bank account. This is actually like a pro tip here. Uh, you wouldn't be able to read this on the 433. But uh, yeah, so you know we got the full amount removed for the offer. But the 433 actually already gives you a $1,000 allowance. So that would have also been able to remove that 500 bucks. But nonetheless, you'll see that right here, zero from the bank accounts. All right, he's got no... Um, investment accounts, so you'll see these not applicable, and so those are zero, no retirement accounts. It's pretty straightforward. He just has that bank account, not much left over here. Essentially, a lot of his debt was generated when he had a business, and the business kind of went down under, So, and he never paid the tax for it and really has nothing to show for it um, after that. So anyways, that's what's going on here. Nothing else. There's no other assets going on. He does have a car, but it is a lease, so you, you know, can't really sell the car. It's not your car. It's a lease. So there's nothing for the offer here, but we do include how much he is paying, right? And, and some of the terms of the lease, a brand new car here, 11 miles. Okay. So there's zero personal assets, no additional assets he's got here, NA, NA, and he's not self-employed anymore. He's, he is employed. So no business information that we're including there. Okay, no business income or expenses. And then this is where we include his wages. Okay, so there are the wages. All right. We are not including the non-liable spouse here. But I do include that later. So you'll see that here. In terms of the household expenses, we used the standard here, which is found on the IRS's website, uh, the 530, right? You'll see the the rent is 2050, but his portion of that, the 531, is all we can justify from the bank statements. And you'll see down here, we included a calculation, right, for the non liable spouse. We have to include his income, his wife's income, total income, that's household income. Of the household income, what is his percentage, right? 30%. So we go 30%. He can take actually all the food. We could do this, like food, personal care. We can take all that. We can take the health insurance out of pocket. That's fine. The housing, this is shared cost, right? 30%, right? Because that's what we get. Is that 615? But his bank statements only show 531, so we show the 531 here, okay? Um, and then in terms of the vehicle operating, we get the standard here. But for the vehicle ownership, we only get that 30%. Okay, so those are kind of pro tips here. If you have a non-liable spouse and you do live with your wife, we have to include her income in there or his wife, spouse, right? Um, in the calculation to see like what is your income 
percentage of the household income to determine the the shared living expenses here, okay? So you'll see those amounts here, right? That 531 and then that car payment as well. But we get the full amount for the operating um, health insurance that he's paying. That is, so the 300 is, is straight from his bank statements that uh, the amount that he's paying for health insurance. The $68 is the uh, standard that we get for out-of-pocket found on the IRS's website. And uh, let's see here, current monthly tax. This is from his pay stub. So that's Fed taxes, state taxes, Social Security, Medicare tax. Okay, so there's his total household. So you go income minus expenses, remaining monthly income. So he's got no assets, but he does have what we call disposable income there. So if we do the, this would be the lump sum offer. This would be the periodic payment, okay? And you'll see obviously the lump sum's less. So we did that. Um, and the lump sum comes with, you know, you put 20% down when you file and then 80% within five months after the offer is accepted. So nonetheless, we offer the 2,300 bucks here, filled out the rest of this stuff. He's essentially, none of this stuff applies to him. So we just check the box, no, sign this thing. We check the boxes of like what we're including in the offer here. All right, here's the 656 that we used. Okay, again, non-liable spouse, we put that there. Um, and then the tax periods. This is real important that you put the tax periods here. Um, for what tax are you settling? Okay, he doesn't qualify for the low income, so we didn't do that. Doubt as to collectability is what we are doing here. This is 90% of the time what we're checking the box here for. And then again, we're doing the lump sum because we use this 12 factor multiple here. Um, right, you'll see this. That's ex essentially what that explains here, but we're doing the lump sum instead of the periodic payment. So with that lump sum, right, 2,300, 20% is going to, uh, with the offer and then the remaining within, should say five months there. Um, okay, and we sign this thing, look at, we put source of funds, family uh, and friends loan to pay it off because he has no money, right? Um, and these definitely have to be filled out as well. Okay, some of the terms of the offer. We sign this thing, send it out. Now, what did we send out also with this? Okay, with the original, we sent out his pay stubs, his wife's pay stubs, because we have to know how much you know she's making for the determination of the shared household expenses, bank statements, and that auto lease is what we sent out. Okay, now timeline. This is what we should write here. Timeline, right? Uh, this is super important, right? A lot of people want to know how long did this offer take? Oops, here we go. Uh, offer was submitted September of 21. Look at that. We got an IRS letter saying they didn't receive the down payment. So I sent out the offer to the client. He signs it. Supposed to put checks in there. Obviously didn't. So <laughs> that's what happened here. We got this letter saying essentially, right, October 10th. We received it, but uh, let's see here. We didn't get your initial down payment and the application fee. Wow. So we didn't get either of those. You'll see those amounts there. So he had to then, you know, send that in, which we did. Okay. And then we got the letter saying, essentially, we got the offer. Yay. All right. Um, <laughs> so that's what those are saying here. Right. The timeline of submitted, didn't get the down payment, offer received. Examiner asked for updated information. So that's finally like an examiner got assigned. Uh, so they asked for additional information, which was this here. So he had, like I previously mentioned, he had other businesses. Um, and the IRS was like, essentially, what happened to those? So we had to submit, you know, the dissolutions of those companies. Uh, they're dissolved. They're non-existent anymore. Uh, and essentially a statement about that as well. What else did we do? Some bank statements, current bank statements for 2022. Um, current pay stubs and his income did go up from previous. Okay. So it did change the offer. Proof of his health, health care payment, his health insurance essentially is what that is. Um, so we did that. Okay. Um, and then they counter offered. They said, hey, you know, I know you, you submitted an offer for like $2,000, but we counter offer because your income went up essentially. So they counter offered at, shoot, $9,700, I think it was. I'm going to show you that here. Here's the counter offer. 
right? The addendum to the 656. They counter offer 9668 is what that counter offer is. Okay, so um, we said, you know what? We'll take it. He owes about $304,000. $9,600 is a great deal on his end, so we'll take it. We signed this thing, sent it back, and we got this thing accepted. So you'll see up at the top here of this is that, hey, we have accepted your offer. So how long does this thing take? We got this letter, 926, gotcha. There it is. So it took about a year, right? It didn't take, I guess, too long, but about a year is what this what this uh, offer took, okay? Um, offer was pretty straightforward for the most part. There wasn't too many caveats other than the fact that the client did um, have a non-liable spouse and she lives with him, so we had to include that income and then you know get uh, a percentage of household expenses to get the disposable income. So that was essentially the only caveat. Hope the video was helpful for you. If it was, hit that like button, subscribe for more of these videos. Uh, this is my bread and butter. I do the offer and compromise. I try to upload as much as possible in terms of when we get these things uh, accepted. I actually have one coming up. That is one that we got rejected. Unfortunately, you know, we don't win all of them. But uh, so, you know, if you want to find out about that, stay tuned. Thank you so much.